Hello and welcome to this tutorial on a Baja vehicle's engine rails. So the engine rails are the joint between the frame of the vehicle and the engine. And as you can imagine, uh, this part is extremely important to the vehicle in that if it fails, your engine can go tumbling out of your car. Um, but also, this is a great place where you can save a lot of mass and shed a lot of weight. So jumping into it, uh, this is how the engine rail is going to look like in our problem. So we're going to have four joints that go sideways that connect to our frame. We're going to have four vertical holes that connect to the bottom of our engine. And then we're additionally going to have these two holes here that connect to our gearbox. Strictly speaking, the engine rails are only the frame joints and the engine joints down here. This little addition here is just kind of a shortcut to add a uh, add another joint to the gearbox. Um, it's not needed, but it kind of spices up the problem. And this is our loading situation. So we're going to constrain our problem at the uh, frame joints. Um, and we're going to apply 10G loading in the X, Y, and Z coordinate at the engine's center of gravity. So instead of modeling the entire engine here, we're going to simplify it to a, a point and apply a force there. So the center of gravity in this demo, we're just going to estimate its location. Uh, if you were going to follow through on this tutorial and do it on your own engine rails, I highly recommend you calculate the actual center of gravity of the engine. And a good follow-up question would be why are we using 10G loading here? So 10G loading is a great place to start with your analysis if you don't have any better data. Uh, of course, if you have testing data, um, I would recommend you use that instead. But for now, uh, 10G is good. And when I say 10G, I mean 10 times the gravitational force, where we're doing 10 times 24 kilograms, which is the, the, you know, the mass of the engine times 10 for, uh, gravity. So 2400 newtons in total. And additionally, just to spice up the problem, we're going to add 5000 newtons coming from the gearbox. So now that we know how we're going to load the problem, uh, let's jump into Inspire and uh, build our model. Now that we are in Inspire, I first highly recommend that you turn on the model browser and property editor so that you get these two windows and then we can get started. So first, obviously, we're going to have to import our model. There we go. And those look like engine rails. So first things first, we're going to head over to geometry and I'm going to make that CG point. Uh, as I mentioned before, I'm just going to kind of guess the location. Um, I'm not going to be too precise with it. So I'm just going to move that plane kind of in the center there. That looks good. And then I'll put this point about like six inches up. That looks fine. Cool. Now that we have that, uh, we can move on to partitioning. So Inspire will automatically figure out where we want to partition, uh, and that looks correct. So we can just hit partition all, and then I'm going to change this to five millimeters, and that looks good. So the reason why we're partitioning it is so that we can define a design space and a non-design space, and we're doing that for when we run our optimization. So we need to tell the computer where we want to optimize and where we want to leave alone. And the area you want to leave alone is the non-design space. And that's generally reserved for uh, areas where you have constraints or forces, because um, you generally don't want to eat away at material in those locations. So let's move on forward here and let's assign a material to all of these. Uh, I'm going to use 7075 aluminum here. Sweet. And then for these two, Let's assign these to the design space. Sweet. So now you can see it turned uh, this brown color. So believe it or not, we're actually almost done here. Um, so we're going to head over to structure and then we're going to make our connectors. So first we're going to, oh, before we get there, let's first uh, convert bodies to parts. So this is separating uh, the points uh, from our bodies here. Um, so that we can just delete this point right here. There we go. Cool. It's nice and clean now. So let's build our connector. 
so let's build the one for our engine first. So from one of our bolt holes to this point, which is uh, acting as our CG. Let's do that for all the other bolt holes. And let's make sure this is rigid, not flexible. Cool. Um, and let's also follow suit here for our gearbox. So one and two, there we go. Should automatically do the center. And then let's make those rigid too. Sweet. So now we can move on to the loads. So let's apply the constraints. So we are constraining uh, where we're joining it to the frame. So here, 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 and here. And now our forces, we're going to do the 10G loading that I mentioned before, along with the gearbox loading. Uh, so let's make that negative. So negative uh, 2,400 Newtons. Uh, that sounds good. And we're going to do that in all three directions. So that's great. And let's also pick that. And hopefully that's facing the right way, which it is. Let's change that to 5,000 Newtons. Cool. So now we're all set up there, and the last thing we need to do is create more load cases. So currently, it's applying all these loads at the same time, which is not what we want, because that's a bit of an extreme case that where we have this high loading in every direction. So we want to create four load cases where we have one of these forces in each load case. So let's create new load case, new load case, and new load case. Let's rename this one for the X direction. And let's do oh, for Y, C, and let's make this one the gearbox. Cool. And now it's just a matter of moving things around. So that is in the X direction. Um, so I guess we can just remove these three here. So exclude those from X. And that looks like the Y direction. So let's pick all these, throw it into Y. Um, that looks like the Z direction. Take all those. And it's the same thing with the gearbox. Sweet, so we're practically done there. So now we can just run our analysis and our optimization. So analysis, we're gonna hit more accurate and here are all our load cases. So we wanna make sure they're all checked. And then we can just hit run and let it run. Um, same thing we can do with optimization. Um, in this optimization, I'm just doing a maximize stiffness where we're keeping say 15, 20% of our uh, volume apply that to all your load cases and you can just hit run there. Uh, you can also change the thickness constraint. So right now it's doing almost an inch or 22 millimeters as our minimum thickness. We can reduce that. It'll, it'll take longer to run, but uh, we might get a better result. So we can just do like 10 millimeters there. Uh, oh, okay. So you might get this error here. Um, that just means that our point uh, is in our design space. Uh, so we can just uncheck that there. Cool. And now if we hit run, we won't get that error and it'll be running. So while that does the optimization, we can view our analysis. So change result type on Mises. Let's run the animation. So for the gearbox, that makes sense. That's where we have our force. X direction is pulling it. Yep. Makes sense. Same with Y and Z. So in Z, we see the highest load around, I think, 37 MPA. Uh, actually, no, here we see 78 MPA, which um, it is significant, but I think the yield of 70, 75 is around 400 to 500 MPA. So we're definitely under yield, which gives us a lot of wiggle room to optimize our engine rails. Uh, speaking of optimization, let's see how this coming along. 
58%. I'm going to cheat a little bit here. Um, I already did the optimization, so I'm just going to take a look at that. And as you can see, we got optimized engine rails. So obviously, engine rails aren't probably going to look like this. Um, uh, it's going to take some in engineering intuition. Uh, so for example, the uh, the results here say you don't need any material in the center. I sort of disagree with that because it's not taking into account every load case and also like uh, bending moments on the tabs that you're connecting it to the frame. So, you know, definitely take it with a grain of salt here. So when it says no material, I would put probably less material than I usually would, uh, especially compared to this region and this region. But I'll definitely have some left there. Uh, and the rest is up to your interpretation. You can always uh, use this data, you know, go back into CAD or use these polynerbs uh, and then reanalyze it and see if it passes. Um, that's all for this tutorial. Uh, have a great day.